Jamal Khashoggi, will you apologize to his family, sir? Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you. President Biden, is Saudi Arabia still alive? Thank you, thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Hey, guys, so we got to talk about President Joe Biden's highly anticipated trip to Saudi Arabia to get on his knees and beg the crown prince to help lower gas prices here in the United States by increasing their oil production. Now, this is something I've been alluding to and I've been talking about for a while. Okay, as this is probably the best move that Joe Biden can make to have an immediate impact on gas prices here in the United States. However, uh, Joe Biden hadn't had much luck uh, trying to get the Saudis to increase oil production as the Saudis are pissed off at Joe Biden. So pissed off that they wouldn't even pick up the phone to talk to the man, right? Allegedly, allegedly, because Joe Biden, when he was running for president, uh, he was trying to be woke on climate and doing a speech on climate. Uh, he called Saudi Arabia a pariah state, okay? Mainly in response to their alleged involvement in uh, killing American journalist Jamal Khashoggi. And basically, ever since then, um, Saudi Arabia has not liked Joe Biden very much, okay? Our relationship with the Saudis is a love-hate relationship. In fact, I'll let... Uh, Jesse Waters <laughs> explained our relationship with uh, Saudi Arabia because I think he does an excellent job summing it up. Has Biden boxed himself in with his war on domestic energy because now he has no leverage at all? He has. It's stupid. So our entire foreign policy during the Cold War and after, you provide security to the Saudis. So we keep oil prices low and we guarantee the free flow of oil all over the world. And that's basically what won us the Cold War. So when the Cold War ended, we basically pushed the Saudis into the hands of the Russians with this stupid Iran deal. The Saudis hate the Iranians, the Israelis hate the Iranians, but Obama thought he was so smart and he was gonna solve the nuclear crisis in Iran and it really aggravated the Saudis. Trump tried to pull the Saudis back into the American wing and then all of a sudden he kills Khashoggi. Trump was smart about it. He, Figured, you know, it's not worth destroying American energy policy over one killing. I mean, we embrace a lot of worse things than, than one death. How about the 15 of the 19 hijackers on 9-11 with Saudis? Uh, Geraldo, it's the same deal we've made same since deal. 1945. How about they fund you have to every, keep every, that uh, country protected Madras because they the, have no the army, Geraldo. I, obviously, they were involved in 9-11, okay? But listen, do you want $10 oil or not? Yeah, so that is an extremely controversial statement, but that is our relationship with Saudi Arabia in a nutshell, okay? Which is all the more reason why um, we should not be trying to nuke our own domestic production and our own refining capabilities, uh, depending on people who, you know, again, will stab us in the back every now and then, uh, despite uh, being an ally, okay? Okay. Uh, so with that being said, again, this trip was highly anticipated and highly controversial as Biden faced criticisms from both sides of the aisle for going to the Saudis and begging them for more oil. Now, despite that, the Biden administration uh, said that this is not necessarily about oil. This is more about, you know, trying to reestablish our relationship and confronting the crown prince about his alleged role in killing journalist Jamal Khashoggi, okay, and uh, best believe, um, the meeting with the Saudis began with some, some fireworks, right, as uh, he met the crown prince with a fist bump. With the bump of two fists, President Biden today gave media-savvy Saudi crown prince Mohammed bin Salman the viral moment he's been seeking. The president was reluctant to meet with MBS, as he's known, having denounced him publicly after U.S. intelligence confirmed the Saudi leader ordered the murder of one of his critics, Washington Post columnist Jamal Khashoggi. Mr. Biden said he raised the killing at the start of his meetings with MBS, where the fist bumping continued with other top U.S. officials. I was straightforward and direct in discussing it. For an American president to be silent on an issue of human rights, is this consistent with, inconsistent with who we are and who I am? The president was asked how MBS responded. He basically said that he, uh, he, he was not personally responsible for it. I, I indicated I thought he was. There was a clear difference of opinion, confirmed by Saudi Minister of State for Foreign Affairs, Adele Al-Jabir, 
who attended the meetings. The Crown Prince himself, though, did not take blame for the murder. The charges that the Crown Prince knew about it, or much less ordered it, are ridiculous. Khashoggi's fiancé tweeted a photoshopped image of what he might have thought of the meeting, writing, the blood of MBS's next victim is on your hands. I'm sorry she feels that way. Democrat Adam Schiff called the fist bump a reminder of the grip oil-rich autocrats have on U.S. foreign policy in the Middle East. Yeah, so that is what the mainstream liberal media is focused on the most, is Biden confronting the crown prince about the murder of journalist Jamal Khashoggi. However, I think what the American people are most concerned about is the price of gas, okay? Because that is really what Biden's over there for, right? If, if gas prices were not this high, he would not be over there, okay? Uh, so that being said, let's actually listen to what Biden has to say about what he thought of this meeting in regards to whether or not it's going to lead to a decrease in gas prices at the pump. Take a look. On gas prices, if I may, you said that we'll see relief at some point in the not too distant future. What is the message to Americans who are looking for that relief now? When should they expect to see a real change in prices, though they've already well, been, been coming down? Change. They've right. already been coming down. That's right. They've been coming down every single day, the best of my knowledge. When will we see the impact of this visit? I suspect you won't see that for another a couple weeks. And, 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 we'll, and we'll see more when we see gas stations start to lower their price consistent with what they're paying for the oil. Mr. Calling. Yeah, so now all of a sudden, despite the war in Ukraine and Putin's <laughs> price hike, right, the Biden administration's words, not mine, uh, according to Joe Biden, the price of gas has been coming down already, okay? And according to Biden, they'll come down even more once mom and pop <laughs> stop price gouging the American people at gas stations. You know, the uh, people who make just a few cents per gallon uh, off of selling gas, right? Who make almost no money off of it, who make most of their money actually selling things in their, their store. Yeah, yeah, those guys are price gouging the American people, according to Joe Biden. Okay, this guy will scapegoat anybody. But what he's saying is, is true about the price of gas falling recently, uh, as uh, demand for gas has dropped to 8 million barrels per day on July 8th, down from 9.41 million on July. First, as the 4th of July weekend was starting, okay? And the price of oil, okay, crude oil prices are also dropping as well too as they make up 59% of the cost of gasoline down from $123.70 per barrel on March 8th to $96.30 on July 13th. Okay, also what has influenced gas prices as well too, but that's not all good on Joe Biden as... The risk of recession is also creating downward pressure on the price of gas, which explains why Saudi Arabia was ultimately uncommittal, right, on this idea that they're going to produce more oil, okay, uh, despite the fact that Joe Biden came out here and said that Saudi Arabia, his meeting with Saudi Arabia should result in the price of gas going down even more over the next few weeks. In fact, the Saudis actually blamed Joe Biden's domestic energy policy, specifically when it comes to refining capacity here in the United States, on the reason why gas prices are so elevated here. Take a look. Did President Biden ask you, Saudi Arabia, to increase oil production with the hope that it would reduce the price of gasoline in the United States? Not in, in with the specificity, because the president knows that uh, energy issue is an issue of supply and, uh, and demand. It's an issue of balancing markets. Saudi Arabia is committed to ensuring stability in the oil markets. The U.S. government is aware of this. The issue of increases in prices of gasoline that we've seen recently are really a function of geopolitics and psychology. Um, more than they are about fundamental supply demand. The problem of gasoline in the United States is more a function of the lack of refining capacity in the United States than a shortage of gasoline. But is Saudi crude Arabia oil. ready to increase oil production? Saudi Arabia has made it very clear over the past decades that it seeks to assure market stability, that it uh, looks at the fundamentals of supply and demand, and that it works within OPEC and now within OPEC Plus 
to ensure that the markets are adequately supplied with crude oil. Saudi Arabia has increased its oil production over the past year substantially in accordance with the demands of the market and this is a situation that is continuously being assessed by our energy ministry and by experts in this area to determine whether or not more oil is required or less oil is required. But I assume and President this Biden pressed you on this issue today. No, the President doesn't press uh, us on this issue. The President is aware that Saudi Arabia uh, is uh, keen on maintaining stability in the markets. Wolf, the President did not come here to press Saudi Arabia. The President came here to uh, have a meeting with uh, one of America's most important allies in the world and in the region. All right, so you see that, you heard that, okay? Saudi Arabia is basically non-committal on whether or not they're actually going to increase production, okay, uh, despite the Biden administration alluding to such, okay, and basically trying to say that his trip to Saudi Arabia is going to result in gas prices falling over the next few weeks. Instead, uh, Saudi Arabia basically said, look, the issues of gas prices in the U.S. has more to do with uh, the U.S.'s refining capabilities than uh, how much oil we are supplying to the market, which definitely has some truth to it, as the Biden administration could provide some immediate relief at the pump uh, if they could kind of loosen up their regulatory and compliance uh, when it comes to refining here in the United States. And we're going to read a little bit about this. This is kind of complex, but I want you guys to understand at least a little bit of it so you guys can understand how the Biden administration is contributing to making our refining process not as efficient as it could be, which could help immediately lower the price of gas. So let's actually read a little bit about this. The United States has the most complex and efficient refining industry in the world, but we also have less refining capability than we used to. After more than two decades of growth in the United States, in which the United States became the world's largest refiner by volume, our industry has contracted. We've lost 1.1 million barrels of daily refining capacity over the course of the global pandemic, with at least seven facilities shuttering, closing units, or beginning the transition away from petroleum processing. Now, refining, guys, is what happens when we take the crude oil and we process it into wholesale gasoline, diesel, jet fuel, stuff like that, right? So that is a step that is required in order to actually get the fuel, the fossil fuels to be usable, okay? So how much refining capabilities does the United States have? At the start of 2020, the United States had the largest refining industry in the world by a stretch with 135 operable petroleum refineries and a total refining capacity of 19 million barrels per day. Today, we have 128 operable refineries with total crude distillation capacity of 17.9 million barrels per day, a loss of 1.1 million barrels. In this same period of time, the world lost a total of 3.3 million barrels of daily refining capacity. Roughly one third of these losses occurred in the United States. With this realignment and planned refinery openings and capacity expansions in Asia. Trade press reports suggest China will overtake the United States as the country with the most refining capability by year's end. Now, there is a multitude of reasons why uh, the U.S. is losing refining capability. A lot of this stuff has to do with uh, politics and regulations and the fact that, uh, you know, the Democrats want to move away from fossil fuels. So what happens is, is that a lot of these companies are closing up these refineries to account for future demand, right? Because this stuff takes a whole a long time to build. It takes a long time for this stuff to actually come into fruition. So if they know that we're going to be moving away from this stuff in the future, they're closing out these facilities, right? So a lot of this stuff was already planned, but again, it because of the woke on climate push, okay? So that being said, what can Biden do immediately to help out with gas, right? The Biden administration has an immediate opportunity to support refiners by offering a rational and achievable renewable fuel standard rule for 2023 and future years. Refineries are the ones responsible for paying for RFS compliance when government sets yearly RFS standards that are too aggressive and out of touch with consumer demand for gasoline and domestic advanced biofuel production. Compliance costs for the program go 
up. Right now, the RFS is adding about 20 cents to the cost of every gallon of wholesale gasoline and diesel manufactured in the United States. The Biden administration can fix this by modernizing U.S. fuel policies and setting workable RFS standards for the years ahead. Every gallon of U.S. gasoline and diesel will reflect the impact. So basically, what is being said here, and this is according to the American Fuel and Petrochemical Manufacturers, uh, this Biden can provide some relief at the pump, about 20 cents or so, uh, just by getting rid of some regulations, right? When it comes to refineries, okay? Which basically kind of proves Saudi Arabia's point in the sense that, hey, you know, the Democrats haven't necessarily been friendly to our own domestic production, right? Specifically when it comes to uh, our refining capabilities. And that has contributed to the cost of gas going up. So with that being said, uh, in the short term, maybe we'll see a drop in gas uh, if demand continues to decline. But long term, I, I really don't see any uh, immediate relief as the Biden administration seems to refuse to do anything here domestically to really help out with the price of gas. And he would much rather go overseas to beg our allies like Saudi Arabia and to blame people like Putin in the war in Ukraine. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.